there's a higher frequency, or you hear, excuse me, you hear a higher frequency when it's coming toward you. And it's a lower frequency as I'm going away. And there will be a reason, don't you worry, as to why those sheets of paper are there. So, a bike. How is it that a bike is creating a frequency? <laughs> there are treads in the tires. Ah, uh, it's not that they make the tire vibrate, actually. There are treads, and it has to do with the treads, but it's not that they make the tire itself vibrate. The treads, when they strike the ground, move the air out of the way, right? So they compress the air. When the tread then comes off the ground, it creates a mild vacuum and the air goes to occupy that space, and so it's going to actually uh, cause decompression or rarefaction or a lower density. So that is very similar to what happens with the tuning fork. And the truth of the matter is, if I could take my hand and I could do this 100 times a second, I could create a pitch, a frequency. I can't do it though. Right? I just can't do it 100 times a second. But on the wheel, there are treads. And if I'm moving at a certain velocity, those treads will hit the ground at a certain frequency and will cause compression and rarefaction at a certain frequency. And your brain interprets that as a pitch. And don't you worry. I took the measurements. We can figure it out from the video what the frequency we should hear when it's coming toward us and when it's moving away from us are. things we need. Uh, first off, the displacement, 60.0 meters. What I did is I set up these two sheets of paper exactly 60 meters or as close to 60 meters apart as I could make them. And so what I did then is made it so that I could just cut it so that this is only the from when I first run into that first one to when I run into the second one. So it's only the time when I go those 60 meters. From the video, you are aware that I can, we can go through and figure out the time. I'm not going to go through and do that right here. I actually can't do it on this particular computer. I do need the other one in order to figure out the frame by frame, and I'm uh, not going to do that right now. So the time it took was 5.453 seconds is the time for those that displacement. Now we are going to assume that I'm moving at a constant velocity and I actually was pretty sure I was moving at a constant speed. We'll figure out, I'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And that's simply going to be the displacement over the time, delta x over <coughs> delta t. So 60.0 meters divided by 5.453 seconds is equal to 11.0 11.0 exactly or? 0.003. That's pretty close, okay. 11.003 meters per second. In terms of the Doppler equation, this is the speed, Christina, of what? It's the speed of the bike, but I want to know what it is the speed of that. not seen it in terms of what is this because yes, remember the bike is the source of the sound so this is the speed of the source now we need some information about the bike tires this is my bike tire that's a close-up of the treads. So what I did is I went through and I counted the tread sections for the whole time. And there are 54 treads per circumference. 
we also need to know the radius of the tire. Now, it is a 26 inch diameter tire, which means the radius is going to be 13 inches. However, when I get on the bike, I actually compress the tire by about a half an inch. So the radius of the tire is about 12 and a half inches. We need to convert that over to meters. We know one foot is 12 inches, and we know there are 3.281 feet in every meter. So the radius of the tire. radius of the tire. We also need the circumference of the tire. Circumference is going to be 2 pi times the radius, so 2 pi times 0 0.3175 is equal to 1.9948 is the circumference of the tire. Okay, this means that we can now take the 54 treads per circumference and multiply that by the circumference divided by 1.9848 meters. The circumference is going to cancel out and we can get treads per meter. Can you give me one more? Zero. Uh, that's treads per meter. That means every meter that this bike tire goes through, it's going to put 27, etc. treads on the ground. We're very close to getting the frequency. treads per second. How are we going to get that? Because remember, tread is just it's striking the ground, so that's a cycle. So we need treads per second. Say again? Divide by the velocity. Uh, we're not going to divide, actually. That won't get rid of, that won't uh, get treads per second. Multiple. Multiple. We're just going to take the meters per second and multiply it by treads per meter. So 11.003 <coughs> meters per second multiplied by 27.070 treads per meter, meters cancel out, and we're going to get treads per second, which is? 297.856. That's treads per yeah. second. In other words, cycles per second, or hertz. What is this in terms of the equations we're using for the Doppler effect? Andy? Two hundred ninety, roughly two hundred ninety-eight hertz. The frequency of the source. It's the frequency of the source. This is the frequency coming from the bike. We do not have enough information. Actually, let's do this first. Which of the two equations are we going to use to solve for the observed frequencies when it's coming toward and away us, away from us? Which of the two puja are we going to use? Because in the first one, the source is moving. The second one, the observer is moving. And in this particular case, the source is moving. So what piece of information are we missing? Andrew? Um, do we need to know the temperature on that day? We need to know the temperature on that day. Don't you worry. I have the temperature. But the only thermometer I had on that day was a Fahrenheit thermometer. 61 degrees Fahrenheit. How do I figure out the temperature in degrees Celsius if I have the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? Um, temperature and Fahrenheit or oh, I only know Celsius to Fahrenheit actually. <laughs> so Celsius to Fahrenheit is 1.8 uh, times the Celsius temperature plus 32. 
so it's the opposite of that. So Heather. Subtract thirty two and multiply by five ninths. Or one over one point, just the inverse of that. So we can figure out the temperature of degrees Celsius by taking our sixty one, subtracting thirty two from it, and multiplying by five ninths. The temperature in degrees Celsius, please. So then we can get the speed of sound, which was 331 plus 0 0.6 times the temperature in degrees Celsius, or 331 plus 0 0.6 times our 16.1. Repeating, the speed of sound was? 340.6 So now we come back to the frequency equation. We can get the observed frequency for both. We just need to use the minus and the plus. So we have the speed of sound 340.6 repeating divided by the speed of sound 340.6 repeating. Minus will start out with, with the speed of the source, which was 11.003, multiplied by the frequency of the source, which is 297.856. So the observed frequency, and this would be when the object is moving toward us. With sig figs, we're going 308 hertz. We'll get three sig figs. So 308 hertz, and then this is when it, the object is moving toward us. And we have the same equation, only with a plus instead of a minus. The observed frequency when it's moving away from us. 256.129. Sorry, say again, 256.129. It's not going to be 256. Sorry. So then 298, or sorry, 289 hertz when it's moving away from it. So a couple things I want to talk about here. One, people have this idea that the, that the frequency of the source is going to be halfway between the two observed frequencies when it's moving toward us and when it's moving away from us. Please notice that that is not true. Okay? It is roughly 10 hertz larger when it's moving toward us, and roughly 9 hertz less when it's moving away from us. So it is not directly in the middle. If it were directly in the middle, the equations would be a lot simpler. They're not, because it's not directly in the middle. Second, I said that I was moving at a constant um, velocity. How would I know that I was moving at a constant velocity? I was able to tell when I was on the bike. And your frequency wasn't changing. Because remember, the frequency of the source is constant, right? <coughs> it's only we, the stationary observers, who hear a different frequency. So according to me, the person on the bike, the frequency of the bike stayed the same the whole time. It's only you, the stationary observer, that, see, that hears a different frequency. So it started at roughly 310, ended at roughly 390. So, it started here, it's coming toward us. Let's try that again, okay, okay. So, the bike's coming toward you, the bike passes by. The bike's moving away from you. Huh? Okay, maybe that's not good enough for you. Maybe that's not good enough for you. How about you 
listen to this one. Oh, oh listen, to that, listen to that, huh? huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we just took information about the bike tire, the temperature in the air, various things. And we were able to figure out the frequency of the source, the frequency we would hear when it was coming toward us, and the frequency we would hear when it's moving away from us. And would you agree we were pretty close? Yeah. yeah we were. Huh? Yeah. I was pretty excited when I figured out we could do that. <laughs>